It's a family affair when we fire up the motor for the first time because this is Dad's big motor. And today and on this episode, we're going to show you what we do after our first fire to make sure that we get some extended reliability out of this motor. It all happens right now here on Mike's MotorWorks. So we fired this thing for the first time and we had a really good run at it and after making a couple adjustments we were able to get this thing to uh, idle uh, for a pretty decent time. So now what we're doing is we are going in and checking for all leaks and checking some things out and making sure this thing isn't leaking out of anywhere. Uh, we do have some leaking out of the throttle body there, not the throttle body, excuse me, the uh, thermostat and the thermostat housing. So we're going to try to take care of that. And um, there were some other things that we got to take a quick gander at before we run for a little bit of time. Now this thing is running solid lifters. So that means that um, there really isn't a break-in period required for this guy, but we are going to get it to operating temperature and let it run for about 20 minutes and then check the lashing out, all right? And that will ensure that in the future, whenever we want to come out and fire this thing up and have it run, we can do that. Again, the idea here is that we get extended life out of this motor as it sits and in its setup, essentially making sure the bearings are seated, making sure that everything is still uh, firing, working together, and of course, uh, before we take it to dyno, we want to run this several times um, before we run it really hard there um, at the dyno, because you hate to break something while on the machine. So uh, we'll show you what's involved. All right, so uh, one of the things we'll be doing is adjusting our fuel mix here, and uh, so on top we have our 850 uh, quick fuel technologies carburetor. So what are some of the things we're going to be looking at, John? Well, first, we're looking at the float. There's a float inside. Uh, I know it's hard to see. Uh, but we're looking, there's a little itty-bitty air pocket right there on the very top. Ideally, we need one it down in the middle. So we're going to adjust this bottom screw or the bottom bolt to bring the float down so we can get the actual air pocket right about middle. That way you get the optimum flow for this carburetor. Awesome. Are we doing that for just the uh, primaries or are we doing that for the secondaries? We're as doing well? it for the secondaries also, and it needs just the smallest amount of adjustment in the rear. Uh, it's, uh, uh, if you can see it, it is about three quarters instead of half. Uh, so it's fairly close in the rear. We got quite a bit of adjustment for the front. So we need the carburetor bowls to be only half full, is that correct? Correct. All right. Why, why don't we want them all the way full? Uh, air, you need the airflow. Otherwise, you're creating a vacuum in there and it won't get the proper flow of fuel. Okay, and that'll affect what's coming out the squirters on, on top. On the very top. Fair enough. But uh, is that the, really the only thing we need to adjust uh, during this next uh, 20 minutes while it's heating up? Um, we're going to uh, mainly get the carburetor dialed in, adjusting the uh, air fuel ratio, uh, which we're running uh, dual wide bands, one wide band O2 sensor per side. Uh, which you can see here. Uh, so we welded a bung. Uh, a bung is what the oxygen sensor attaches to, uh, to the exhaust. Uh, we got one for each side, uh, and we want it to be adjusted uh, ideally at idle uh, air fuel ratio between 12 and a half to 13 and a half. Um, on the older carburetors, that's where you want. On the newer stuff, uh, you want 14.4 to 14.7. And that's just for that idle. We, of course, we don't know what it's going to be like under load. Is under that load, right? correct. Under load, it'll change, correct? It'll change, yes. All right, fair enough. So we're going to do that, and while it's running, I'll take care of the 20-minute warm-up, and then um, how, are we going to let it cool down before we worry about the lashing? Yeah. Yep, we're going to let it cool down, then worry about the lashing afterwards. All right, so that's what's going to be involved. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep this running and let you guys see that process live. Yeah, 
That's not bad. Cold running about eight, nine hundred RPM. Without a load, without a torque converter, and so forth. It'll probably idle somewhere between a thousand and eleven hundred within a vehicle with a load. Right now, all it has on it is a crank and a flywheel, which is a manual flywheel, just for starting purposes.
even loud with those glass packs on. Especially when you wrap on. Yeah. So we're a little bit ahead of our 20 minutes of run time. Um, we're just trying to figure out leak and all that good stuff. Is that what we're doing? Yep. It's got a water leak on that one uh, drain pipe for the uh, electric fuel or what electric water pump. All right. So you need to figure that out before we uh, let yep. it run full cycle. Cool deal. But uh, there we go. We got the fuel dialed in already. Uh, you're going to do the vacuum gauge thing out like we did the other one? No. Nope. No no need to on this one? Nope. All right. This one's got a full full mechanical advance. All right. So there we go. Awesome. So there we go, guys. We did hit 6,000 RPMs just on those quick wraps. Yeah, I know. That was... Uh... Which means it'll turn 7,500. Woo! Easy. Okay. All right. And that is it. And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, we'll feature more on our L.A. Fent. 437 stroker build a little bit later on.